Okay, so in this video, I am going to show you guys how I sync up my pocket operators. Um, this is something I've seen a lot of different threads on and different discussions online, and a lot of people asking how to do it as well. And um, I've tried messing around with a few different ways, and this is what I've come up with that I think is the optimal way, of, of ways that I've found at least. Uh, and for a number of reasons, which I'll... I'll explain. All right. So first of all, uh, central to the way I do mine is I have my clock coming from a phone, a phone app. Uh, this is an iPhone. I'm pretty sure they make this app for Android phones as well. But it's uh, made by Korg, and it's called Sync Control for Mono Tribe. And uh, this is what I use to generate my clock. And uh, the settings that I have it on. Are right here. Oh, it's kind of bright. Let's see here if I can fix that for you. Sorry, I'm using my camera to film this because obviously my phone's right here. So, anyways, this is these are the settings that I use, and uh, I have it set on the left because that's the uh, channel that puts out the click. For uh, these guys, use the left. Pick it up on the left side. The pocket operators. Uh, the polarity set to positive. The gains all the way up. Uh, that's important. Otherwise, it won't work correctly. And the beat is on one eighth. And if the beat's on any other setting, it will still start and stop them. But it won't be. The tempo won't be correct, and they'll kind of jump around like they're doing a weird shuffle thing or something. So, anyways, those are the settings right there. And let me get back out of here. From my iPhone, I have this thing right here, which is a five-way stereo splitter. I uh, got it from Radio Shack for about $20, I think. And each one of these, what it's doing is basically just taking the signal out of this phone and splitting it however many ways you want it to up to five times. So each one of these right here is going to the left side of a set of two operators. Now I have I have all six of these hooked up, but I have them in groups of two, and uh, which I'll explain here in a second. Anyways, I have the uh, iPhone app, the audio coming from it, going into the left side. In between the pocket operators, I have these little things that I got off eBay from China for probably like less than a dollar. Uh, which are pretty handy for this. It just gets rid of some of the cables and some of the mess. Stop that and put these back on the right settings. And then from each one of the sets of two pocket operators, I have an audio cable going over here to this little passive uh, four channel mixer slash stereo splitter. It just lets you route audio in some different ways. And, uh, the reason I do this is just to save inputs on my mixer over here so that all these are just going into one set of stereo inputs on my mixer. This is totally unnecessary if you just want to plug these straight into the mixer. You can do that or whatever. But uh, yeah, so I have each one of these sets of two going back into here. So that's three, three ins and this is the uh, output going to my mixer. So kind of get what I'm saying here. It's three sets of two. And each set of two pocket operators is getting an input from the iPhone. And then the output is going into this passive mixer. And from the passive mixer, going into this stereo channel on my mixer right here. All right, and now I'll show you some of the reasons why I think this is a good way to do this. Um, first of all, having this iPhone app be the clock is really is really neat because for one, um, you've got and you can change the tempo right here. You can get it up really fast too, and probably do some crazy stuff with that. I haven't messed with. Turn this down a little bit.
Okay, and you've also got universal swing right here. So, that's pretty neat. And the reason I have these in groups of two is because when I've hooked up more than two of these, I feel like I noticed a uh, pretty noticeable loss in audio quality. With two, I don't really seem to notice any at all. And also because the first, the first three, the first set of pocket operators that were released, the uh, rhythm, the sub, and the factory are a lot louder than the second set that came out. And if you have them set up like this, when you turn this pocket operator up or down, let's see, it turns, let me stop all these other ones. All right, so let me put in a couple sounds so you can hear this. Anyways, when these are hooked up like this and you turn this one down, it turns both of them down. But if you turn this one back up, it's not going to override this this volume setting. So, so what you can do because because these ones are so much louder. If they're first in the chain of the sets of two, you can see I have these two together, these two together, and these two together. The ones on the right over here. That's the factory and the arcade. If you have the the older ones as the first one in each of the set of two, you can turn the volume up all the way over here on this one. And put it about right. I, I mean, this is preference, of course, but I usually keep this one about halfway and this one all the way up, and it seems to be a pretty good balance. Because another thing about the first the first set of these that came out is when the volume's somewhere around down here on the bottom row, it starts to distort. And uh, having them like this, I feel like it's just a good balance of of uh, audio levels. Because when you have three or more of these and they're the first and second sets mixed together, it gets kind of wonky trying to work out the levels and figure out which one's louder, which one's softer, why are they acting the way they are, whatever. So three three buses, if you will, of pocket operators, two apiece with the older ones being on the left side of the chain. Seems to work really well for audio levels. And another reason that I like this setup is because that, uh, hang on, I gotta open an app on my computer here. Stop these. Oh yeah, and, and by the way, if you have this set up like this, when you, you're changing the sync mode on these, you're gonna want the one on the left side to be sync five, the one on the right side to be sync four. And another thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is when, when you wanna have them, uh, armed to sync, I, I guess you'd call it. You just make sure that this red light is on by tapping it on and off once. And you can actually, so if you hit stop on this one while it's going, and then press play again, it's going to be in time, but it's not going to be in the correct position necessarily, unless you start it on the correct position. So what you have to do is stop your master clock, turn these on and off, just to get them all on the same page or whatever. And uh, then they'll be playing in sync and from the same position. So five, four, do that to have them armed and ready to uh, ready to receive this clock signal. Okay, now as I was saying, another reason that I like doing this this way is because this uh, Korg app is Ableton Link enabled and Ableton Link is um, really neat. Cut 
because second here, sorry. Sorry, I'm uh, getting my Ableton started up here. Okay. So you just go in here to uh, Ableton link. Hang on, let me make sure that. Oh, that's why. Got airplane mode on. And we'll put this. Okay. using control here all right so Ableton link is uh, it's pretty neat if you've got Ableton live all you have to do is make sure that your device that you're using and you know your computer that Ableton is on are on the same Wi-Fi network tilt my camera up here and well, it's kind of hard to see but once, you, once, as long as those are both on the same Wi-Fi network, up here in the corner of Ableton is a little button that says Link. All you do is hit that so it turns on, and you then come over to your device, go in here where it says Ableton Link. It says Ableton Link right here. You'll go to hit Enabled, make sure it's all working and everything connected to one app, which is this Korg one. And that's all you do, and as long as they're on the same Wi-Fi network and you say okay right there, you uh, you are linked to Ableton Live, which means I can now I don't know if you saw that little wheel spin for a second there that time, but so now everything is in sync with Ableton Live. And I can go up here in Ableton Live. can't zoom with this lens, sorry. And I can control the tempo with Ableton. So my pocket operators are now in sync with Ableton, just like that. And uh, so that's another reason why I think this is a, a good way of doing this. And uh, Ableton Link is really neat. It's, it's simple and it works. What it does is it lets any device that's using it at the same time any device can um, control the tempo. Whatever device changes the tempo is now the tempo master. And uh, the start and the stop only work per device. So if I hit stop on my pocket operators, Ableton's not going to stop. But if I hit play again, the pocket operators will wait to start up again until they're in sync. And same goes for Ableton. So it's a really neat way of just a simple way of linking up sync information between different devices and what have you. So anyways, so you can see the uh, clock, the bar up here indicating the um, sync phase of Ableton in comparison to the to, uh, the core gap. But yeah, that's how I set these up. And I think it's a good way of doing it, so I figured I'd show you people because, like I said, I feel like it's a topic of discussion with lots of different different ways and opinions of doing it. But uh, yeah, so that's mine. So I hope somebody finds this useful and and it works for you. All right, thanks.